This is the chapter seven extra practice. This is a review before you get ready to take your test. So it says use a model to solve. Now, now we know how to do it without a model. It's much easier to do it just in our head, but let's talk about a model. Two fifths of 10. So I would draw five boxes for my denominator. And I would distribute my 10 pieces within those five boxes. And then I would count two of those boxes, two fifths of the boxes. And that would give me four. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so now this one, I have 18 and I want to distribute it among nine. So I'm going to draw nine boxes. And then I'm going to distribute my 18 among those boxes. So you can put one in each box and you'll be at nine. And then you could go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then we want four of those nine. So I would have two, four, six, eight. I would get eight. So there's some examples for you to follow to finish that lesson. Okay, now we're going to go back down to lesson 7.2 through 7.4 and 7.6. It says find the product, write the product in simplest form. So if we were multiplying this, remember how I told you we need to put your whole number over 1? So 9 times 3 is 27 sevenths. And 7 times 1 is 7. And then you have to make that into a mixed number. Now, if you can't do that in your head, you can divide it. 27 goes in there. Then we would have 27 divided by 7. 7 goes into 27 three times. Let me move this down a little bit. Um, three times, which is 21 which leaves us six sevenths. So this would be or three and six sevenths. Okay, we're going to move on to number four in that section. So we're going to put our two over one. And we say two times two is four over five. So four fifths. Will four fifths simplify? No. No, it won't. Let's go down and do number eight. Now we can cross reduce on this if you remember. Let's do it without cross reducing and then we'll cross reduce. Two times three is six. What is seven times eight? Fifty-six. Can that simplify? Yes. Yeah. What can we divide it by? Two. Two. So it would be or three. 28. Now if we had crossed reduced, we could have done 2 into 2 and 2 into 8, and we would have gotten 328. So that's the beauty of cross reducing. Okay, we're going to do the word problem. We're going to do number 13. At the aquarium, three-fourths of the animals are fish. Of the fish, one-third are clownfish. What fraction of the animals at the aquarium are crown, clown fish? What's our problem going to look like? Our number sentence here. Three fourths, three fourths times one third. So we would have three what? Twelfths, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to simplify that to one fourth. Or we could have cross reduce and crossed out our threes and made them one, and we would have had one fourth when we multiplied. So either way works. Just if you cross reduce, you're going to uh, maybe not have to simplify. 14 has a label. Don't forget to put it on there when you do that problem. Okay, so now we've turned the paper over to P166. 
And we're going to do 7.5 and 7.8. It says complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. What do we know if we are multiplying two fractions? Is our product going to be greater than, less, or less than our factors? Less than. Less than, because we're taking parts of part. So we don't even have to do this. We just know, well, we multiply two fractions. And so this one is less than. Okay, um, what do we know if we take a whole number times a fraction? It's going to be bigger than the fraction. It's going to be bigger than the fraction. Like, and it's going, it's going to be bigger than either one, really. Right? Okay, so I'm going to let you do two and four. How about three? What is that? Less than. Equal to. What? Why is Either it equal to? Equal to three thirds equals one. Three thirds is equal to one. So this could really be one. And so we'd have one times that, and one times any number, there's that uh, identity property, is always going to be equal to that number. Okay, let's move on down. Now we're looking at lesson 7.9. Again, it says find the product and do it and make it into simplest form. Now um, we're going to make our mixed numbers into improper fractions and multiply them. So let's look at number one. I can use one fourth, right? Already uh, made into a fraction. And let's make two and one half into an improper fraction. What is two and one half in an improper fraction? What do we do? We take the denominator times the whole number, which in this case is four. Two times two is four, and add our numerator. So now we have five halves, and we can multiply that to be five eighths. Can five eighths be simplified? No, no, because five is a prime number. That's only divisible by one and itself. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try number five. We have two numbers we have to put into improper fraction. So we're going to take our denominator of five times our whole number of two, which is ten, plus three. That gives us thirteen fifths. Times our denominator of eight times our whole number of three, which is what? Three times eight is? Plus one is? 25 over 8. Now we can do some cross-reducing here, right? Otherwise, we're going to be multiplying 13 by 25. That would give us a pretty big number. But we can look and we say, well, 5 will go into 5 once, and it will go into 25 5 times. So now we just have 5 times 13. 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 3 is 15. And 50 plus 15 is 65. And we have it over 8. Now, can we leave it over 8? No. no. Okay, so how many 8s in 65? 8. Eight. And what did that, that's, what is that, 8 times 8? 64. 64, so that leaves us 1 8th eight. Eight left over. All right, let's go on down and try number 9. It wants you to use the distributive property here. Remember the distributive property, we're going to distribute something. We're going to, we're going to take that uh, mixed number and we're going to break it in half. So we're going to have, in each of our parentheses, sets of parentheses, we're going to have 15 times something, right? What are we going to have 15 times? What part of our um, mixed number are we going to put in this first one? Three. The whole number, right? Three. And then over here we're going to put our one fifth. Okay, so what is 3 times 15? 45. 45. So we're going to have 45 plus, now remember when we do this, we can put 15 over 1. That allows us to cross reduce. 1 and 3. And 3 times 1 is 3. So we end up with 3 over 1. Sorry, my writing is, this is small. 3 over 1 or 3, right? So now we're at, let me clean that up a little bit. Now we're at 45 plus 3. Everybody understand that? This was 45. This was 
3 over 1, so that would be 3. So our answer is 46. So in this one, you would set it up that same way. 2 times 21 plus 3 sevenths times 21. And that's all I'm going to do on that. Okay, let's look at the uh, 7.10. Now, this is our problem solving that we did yesterday. Gabriella wants to tile a room with an area of 320 square feet. The width of the room is four-fifths its length. What are the length and width? For me, it's easiest to put that in a formula. Let's, But let's look at it here. 320 square feet. The width of the room is four-fifths of the length times the length. That's the width, and this would be L. So our formula for width, length, uh, area is length times width, right? Mm -hmm. Equals our area. So we know our area is 320. We don't know our length. So we have our length, and then width is two-fifths of the length, okay? So now we have to do guess and check. So what number do you think we can put in there for L? Anybody got a guesstimate? Oh, yes, it is supposed to be four-fifths. That is supposed to be four-fifths. So I've corrected that. Now, what are we going to use for L? Give me a number. 10. So we're going to plug 10 in here. 10 times 4 fifths times 10 is supposed to equal that 20. Let's see if it does. What is 10 times 4 fifths? That would be 10 over 1. You can cross reduce. So uh, 4 times 2 is 8. 10 times 8 is only. 80. So we have about one-fourth of what we need there. Huh? 24. Try 24. Okay, so 24 times our width is 4 fifths of 24 is supposed to equal 320. So what's 4 fifths of 24? <coughs> Well, it's 24 times 4. 20, four, 20 times 4 would be 80, and 4 times 4 would be 16. 96. So that would be times 96 fifths. Boy, we're getting pretty big here, aren't we? So we're going to have to, we're still checking. Is it going to equal 320? So 96 times 24. 4 times 6 is 24. Regroup a 2. 4 times 9 is 36, plus 2 is? What are we seeing so far? We're already too big, aren't we? Maybe. Okay. 20. Oh, we got to divide, so that's right. 2 times 6 is 12, 18, 19, right? 4, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And so we have... <clears throat> 2,304 divided by what? Five. Goes in there four times. What do we know? All right. It's too big. Okay, so what else could we try? 10 is too small, 24 is too big. 20. Let's try 20. Okay, we still have our length is 20 times our 20 times 4 fifths. Okay? Then we're going to say, does that equal 320? So we have 20. I'm going to stop it and do my math. Okay, so when I did my math, I got 20 times 16. I got this width to be equal to 16. And when I multiplied them, I got 320. So our room is 20 feet long by 16 feet wide. 